everyone. I'm Andy Sanders from 125 Live Pottery Studio and a shout goes out to all you mud puppies that are confined to the home bases and we can't go out and see each other and have a good time. So what I'm going to do today is we're going to do some things if you happen to have some clay if you thought ahead long enough uh, or far enough I should say that you brought some clay home with you maybe you can have some fun with the clay. What I have here, this big white area, is a piece of canvas stretched over a sheet of plywood and just stapled along the edges with a, uh, I used our air gun, we happen to have a portrait studio, so I have all these things that my uh, wish and desire to use, but if you can use a piece of canvas to work on, it's a good hard surface that you can wedge the clay or do whatever you want. So what we're going to start out with today is some easy things if you have some clay or you can use this the next time you get into the studio is making some texture stamps and they're real easy to do basically what you do is you start with a piece of clay like this and we're just going to cut off a little piece of this and we're going to start shaping it and we're going to start off by shaping it in the shape of a leaf so I'm just pinching it together and I don't want a real big leaf uh, I want a little bit smaller one. I've got a big one here. And we're just going to start working this clay as best we can. Hopefully you can see this okay. And we're going to shape it in the shape of like an elm leaf. Just a long pointed leaf. Um, we have our uh, tool here that we can use to kind of shape it a little bit. It's very important when you're making texture stamps to keep a clean sharp edge because it's going to be digging down into the clay to, to make a, a sharp edge and that's what you want. So we're going to start off with just the general shape and trying to shape by keeping it flat on the board and shaping it in somewhat of a leaf shape. It takes just a little bit of work here to get, get to that point. And now that we got somewhat of a leaf shape here, uh, if you can see on the underside, whoops, I got a little bit of a hole. Let me fill that in by scraping the bottom with my rib. I'm going to reshape it again here to get the shape again. Now I can show that to you. So basically what we have here is somewhat, a, there I guess you can see it, a, a leaf shape, a rough leaf shape. I'm going to put that back down on the board and then I'm going to take and pinch in like this at the top. So I have, I have to create a, something to grab onto when I'm putting this uh, stamp on wet clay. What we're going to do with this, people, is uh, once we get this stamp made, we'll let it dry real well, and then we'll bisque fire it. And bisque firing is all we need to do with this stamp before we can use it. So let's just keep working on this here. I've got two of them to make today, and two leaves anyway. And let's look at the underside and see how we want to change that a little bit. Basically the underside we're, we're going to curl around here and make like a leaf. And sometimes it's fun on these texture stamps if you can to make them so that you can put them opposite ways. In other words, if you stamp it this way for one then you turn it that way for the other and they fit into somewhat together. So that's the, the whole idea is that we'd like to have these fit so that they could fit together in a texture stamp on a mug or on a vase or something like that, a bowl, whatever we choose to use. Now I'm scraping along the sides, remember, to keep a good sharp line for an edge and that's very very important when you're making texture stamps to so make a nice sharp edge. And what we're going to do here now is we're just pinching a rib. If you can see, uh, something for me to hang on to when I go to stamp it on wet clay. Let's see if that feels about right. I think I can do that. I think, I think that's about enough to grab into. You're going to have to be your own judge on that. We're going to shape up the edge here again just to see that we got it where we want it. We're almost done with the beginning part of it or the skeleton and we're going to hang some meat on it here in a minute. Okay, this is pretty pretty simple, folks. Now, I sort of ruined the integrity of the side, so I'm going to come back and I'm going to work that again so that 
We keep it nice and flat, but we have a good edge design for our leaf. But you can see it's starting to take the shape of a leaf now. And see if we can't get it just a little bit better. My backside isn't real sharp here. I'm going to sharpen that out. That's starting to look pretty good. I hope most of you haven't been too bored while you're at home working or not doing anything confined to home. Uh, I never knew grocery shopping could be so exciting. At least you get out and get to say hello to other people. I think what I miss most about being confined in place is, is uh, the camarader camaraderie of seeing all of you in the clay studio. It's, it's lonesome because it's such a uh, societal thing that we have going and it's it's tough when the mud puppies are busted up so hopefully this can bring you a little bit of fun and get you excited about getting back in the clay studio now the other thing that you can always do if you have a lot of time and are connected to the internet go to YouTube and type in uh, slab clay uh, wheel throwing whatever you, is your thing to do but all you wheel throwers out there this is kind of forcing you to be a slab thrower now and um, that's not so bad either. Okay, we have what I would say is a pretty good model here. Now I'm going to take the bottom of this, I'm turning it upside down, taking the bottom and trying to scrape it smooth. And then we're going to take our uh, needle tool and we're going to make a rib right down the middle of this leaf, if you can see that. Go make a rib. Remember, whatever you indent is going to be, when we stamp it in the clay, is going to be sticking up. So we're going to make this fairly hefty uh, indentation like that. Hopefully you can see. I know the lights are real bright, but I'll give you a little bit of an idea. Then I'm going to start putting in here how the leaf veining should go. And I'm going to put a line that goes like this. Then another line that comes down here. This is hard to totally show you, but I think you'll get the idea. We're going to go just like that. And then we're going to bring another one down here. And another one. And just work this way all the way down to the bottom of the leaf mold. Now you can make whatever designs you want. You're not limited to any particular thing. It's totally up to you, and that's what makes it fun. Now, if you notice, when you've done this, you get a little bit of crud in the crevices. So what we've got to do is clean that out, sharpen our edge up again, and we're going to go back through and just kind of lay that in there one more time so that we can get the leaf in there better, the veination in there. And then I'm going to go down the middle and clean that out one more time so the main rib is like that come back in pressing down now because we don't really have to pull clay out we just got to make it distinctive lines I'll flip it around do the other side and you see how easy that was not hard at all now what we're going to do is just check the sides remember I said the edges need to be sharp Keep the edges that way, check for any O-ridge run on this, and we should be done with our leaf stamp. Now, I can't show you today what this is going to look like. We'll have to do that some other time, or if we get back into the clay studio, um, in some of my classes you can uh, see it. I will be some at some time teaching a class on slab throwing. And I think what we'll do in part of that is make stamps like this. I think everybody would enjoy doing that. So there we have our leaf. Let me see if I can get a little closer to the camera. There we have our leaf stamp. And we're just going to let that dry and go from there and see what we have. It'll be fun to kind of like being in a dark room, seeing what comes, turns out. Now, I've got one more leaf here to do since... You're here watching, I've already made this. It's a little bit bigger one. Let's just go ahead and put the veination in that. I'm just going to draw the middle vein right down the center, pressing down, not necessarily trying to take out 
uh, clay, but just pressing down. And then we're going to start the venation process. And I'm going to try to do this a little faster just so you can see. This is just a recap for you. You can make a carve about whatever you want to into these. You can make them different shapes. Don't have to be leaves, but this is just one suggestion for you. Now we're going to go out, turn around and go on the other side. Now you can leave it just like that if you want to for something kind of contemporary and different. But I'm going to choose to make it like a leaf. What I'm doing here is I'm going in between where I went before with the veins. I think this will look really neat on some slab plates. Uh, just a multitude of things that you can use this for. Okay, now we got to sharpen up the edges a little bit. Come around with our rib and pull the edges in. And of course the rib gets all sticky with clay, so you got to wash that off every now and then. We'll come back. Make sure we got a flat surface. And kind of clean out those places. You can take your rib if you want to and do that. It doesn't matter that or a needle tool. So this is something good to do on these rainy March days. Um, hopefully you have clay at home that you can do this. I know a few of us, when we heard that we were going to get stuck in our homes, ran and got some clay out of our lockers before the last hurrah at 125 Live. And boy, will those kilns be busy when we get back. Hopefully by the time we get back, the new kiln will be here and we can get that fired up and really go to town on all this stuff. Because I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to have a lot of bisking to be done. Okay, we're just finishing off here, uh, smoothing this out, making sure it looks good. I think we got what we need, and right there we got a bigger stamp. So you can see the two sizes of stamps that I got for leaves. And we're just going to set those aside to dry. Let me get a, a board to put them on. I'm just going to lay those stamps, and... Um, Oh, by the way, I have my little signature that's a, a dog print, a paw print, and I'm just going to put that paw print right on the back side so when it goes in the kiln and comes out, everybody knows that that belongs to Andy. There we go. So we'll just set those aside. Now, uh, trying to think what other... You, you can do just about anything you want, whatever you can dream up for different stamps. Uh, I've got some old buttons that I found that have neat textures on them. You can carve into these things. There's a multitude of things that you can do um, with that. The next thing that I'm going to do is we're going to take a pretty good sized piece of clay here and see if we can make a bird feeder. And hopefully, hopefully we can get this... Uh, worked out. Uh, I haven't made one before, but I've got an idea in my mind as to what to make. And so if you want to just stick with me and watch that, that's great. But I think what we'll do is we'll cut this, this one off on the stamps and then we'll start a new one. Thank you.